I'm sure many of you who are, are teachers or former teachers or uh, involved in the educational field, you know that this time of year means really one thing. Summer vacation isn't far away, so you know, not that you know, it's it's uh, we love being there while we're there, but there's something about that vacation thing that just uh, <clears throat> so there. I've, I've been very fortunate that I, when I was growing up, my kid, my family always went on vacation, and we did so with our kids, and we continue to do so today, and. Uh, so last last year, I went on like an awesome trip. Uh, Shannon Vesley and my sister Lana and Lori Lewis and I all went to Europe. Uh, we went to Paris and we went to Rome, and you know we did not create any international incidents, so <laughs> it was a successful thing. But but you know when we were there. Um, you, you go around and you see all, well, first of all, the thing that I love most about traveling in general is the wow factor, you know? Whether you're standing, um, looking at the Grand Canyon or, or you're standing, looking at the Eiffel Tower or whatever, is just this amazing sense of wow. And so as I, I kept getting that feeling over and over again um, as we were uh, traveling. And, and so Shannon and I, I know most of you know Shannon, okay, yeah, you know she is like equally nerdy as I am. And so, you know, we like to talk about, we're sitting on the train and we're talking about uh, this amazing, you know, and, and what does this mean? I mean, when you, you look at the beauty of the earth, when you look at the incredible, incredible things that people have made, and you want to ask yourself, what, what does this mean? What does it mean about us as people? What does it mean about God? Um, and so we, we started talking about that. And, um, we were, we were thinking about Psalm 8, and in Psalm 8, it says this, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hand. You put everything under their feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Um, which took us back in, in, to Genesis as well. And in Genesis and the creation story, we go back to that and we, I, I want to I look at what that says. A couple of verses in particular. When uh, God is creating everything there is to create. And we are all very familiar with that story, how he created all of these. Um, and then it says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Shall we pray? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You are our strength and our redeemer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. One of the, the things that I 
that creation story tells us. Now we can debate forever about, you know, uh, about creationism and all of that. But in doing so, sometimes I think we miss one of the major, major points of this story. And one of those major points is this. We are created in the image of God. Every single one of us. It tells us who we are. It's just like, uh, in some ways, when you look at some kids and you just know whose they are, right? Uh, Hopefully that happens with us as well, that people can look at us and know whose we are. It also helps us to understand how we are, how we are in this creation, how we fit in with each other and with the rest of creation. And perhaps most significantly, it suggests to us why we are. You know, we're the only Creatures of creation that ask that question. Why are we here? Why? Who are we? Why are we here? Other creatures don't ask that question. Uh, I know my, my, my dog Max does not contemplate, am I really a good boy? You know? Because <laughs> the answer is no, he's not. But anyway. Uh, when we look at, I, I think we've kind of gotten our ideas about our place in the world a little bit messed up at times. And they really can kind of go along two extremes. Sometimes we underestimate the importance and the value of human beings. We think, really, human beings are nothing. Nothing other than other creatures that walk upon the earth, we're no different, we're no more valuable. Uh, there is that idea out there. And then there's the opposite idea, which we overestimate ourselves, thinking that human beings are everything. Those two extremes are, are problematic for different reasons, but both extremes are at odds with what God has told us about ourselves. We are his creation, and as such, we, we owe our very existence, our lives, everything we owe to him. But on the other hand, we are valuable. We are, we are created in the image of God. Um, and... I think we live in a time, unfortunately, and I think we could probably all agree with this. We might not all agree about how this happens or why this has happened, but I think all of us can probably agree. Unfortunately, increasingly, we see a devaluing of human life. I mean, how can you explain things uh, like, you know, consider these, think about, all the school shootings that we have, we don't even, you know, bat an eye hardly at those because they have become so common. Terrorist attacks. I mean, how many have we seen this, this week? I mean, people being uh, blown up in their, their church services. I heard this morning there was a... Um, a synagogue that was attacked yesterday um, in uh, New Zealand, and there was a mosque attack. I mean, there are these attacks where the targets are deliberately innocent people. When you hear, I mean, all of these things that, that we hear of, of children being abused or, or children being harmed, uh, that incident that occurred in uh, the Mall of America uh, where a young boy was thrown over the edge. What is going on? Well, a lot of things, of course, and we could analyze them, but I think one of the things that clearly is a problem is that we have, in some ways, uh, we have, have lost track of the notion that human beings are made in the image of God. All of them. 
mentioned here too, human slavery is at an all-time high. We think that was gone a long time ago. No, it isn't. Um, we, we have all kinds of human trafficking going on. Uh, and if we think that this area of the world is immune to that, we're, we're wrong. You know, to see human beings as commodities, I mean, where does that come from? Well, in part it comes from an inadequate knowledge of who people are. And unfortunately, those ideas have really proliferated a lot in, in I would say, the late 20th and, and early 21st century here. Um, we devalue people before they're born. We devalue people before they die. It's as though they had no value. We can't accept that. Um, many of you know I teach American literature, so I always try to work in American authors every chance I get. Ernest Hemingway, <clears throat> major writer of the 20th century, of course, in one of his stories called The Clean, Well-Lighted Place, character says this, life was all nothing, and man was nothing too. And in many ways, that reflects a thought that really, unfortunately, has, has taken hold, that human beings are nothing too. This is what we are asked to oppose with every aspect of our being. To let people know that everyone is created in the image of God. That the question then becomes, what does that, what does that mean? What does it mean to be created in the image of God? Well, that word image, Selain, uh, what it actually means is that that thing carries the essence of what is represented. In other words, it's not an image as in, you know, just a, a, a statue or, you know, whatever. Uh, that's not the kind of image that word reflects. That word means it carries the essence. We carry the essence of God with us in our very being. Not by anything we've done, but just because that's the way that he created us. And that's what, what gives us such value. Last week, uh, of course, we were celebrating Easter. And when we think about what that meant, that the, the God of, of the universe is in, his, uh, in his son said, you are so valuable, I will die for you. I will have a, a, a horrible death. Why? Because you are valuable. That's how valuable we are. Now, in a lot of the cultures at, uh, from, from the Old Testament and New Testament were written, uh, a lot of them were cultures that had, they made shrines to gods. Um, and uh, if, you, if you travel, it's, it's, it's one of the cool things to see, all of these ancient statues or ancient um, works where they were they were trying to honor their gods. Um, and yet our God said, don't make a graven image. Why? Because the image is in you. The image of God. We carry it. We don't create it. We reflect it. And there's a big difference. Uh, a lot of these cultures saw human beings as merely playthings of the gods. Can I understand how really the, the Judaism and Christianity in their elevating human beings to such a status, that was just weird to the rest of these. It's like, no, human beings are just the playthings of the gods. And we, on the other hand, were told, no, you are the image of God. It's a huge, huge difference. So what difference does that make to be created in God's image? Well, for one thing, it implies this. The worth and dignity of all, all human beings. We have a tendency as human, we are 
Though we're made in the image of God, we are also fallen beings, right? We're also sinful beings, but uh, <clears throat> we, and we have this tendency sometimes to categorize people, to marginalize people, to suggest that they are somehow lesser than. Even our language can re, you know, reflect that. Uh, I read one author, Krista Tippett, who said, you know, we need to think. When you hear of a, a boat full of immigrants, you must remember that's a boat full of people. Um, recently in the Methodist Church, as I'm sure all, all of us are aware, they had a, a, a big convention that, that tried to um, lay, lay down the parameters of what we, we think about um, certain issues, such as uh, homosexuality. Uh, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that this is more than an issue. We're talking about people, okay? People. People that we know. People that we love. Uh, we can never lose track of the inherent value of all human beings because when we start to lose track of that, we we lose track of who we are. We lose track of whose we are. And all kinds of, of, of things result from that. Um, when we do that, when we devalue and dehumanize people, we are, we are contradicting what God has said to us about human beings. You, you think about it, uh, and we live, we live in a time where, I mean, think about how nasty we become to each other. I mean, not all of us, because we're nice folks, okay? But, I mean, turn on the television and listen to a little bit of political discourse, right? I mean, nasty. Somehow, we've got it in, uh, it's, it's become a, a commonplace for people to treat other people and talk to other people as though they were devils or something. When we demonize people that disagree with us, that's just wrong, okay? That's just wrong. Uh, Jesus never did that. He never made fun for it. He never made fun of people who were disabled. He healed them, right? He never, you know, lashed out at sinful people. He forgave them. Uh, we, we have to remember those things. We have to remember what our humanity means, but we also have to remember that every single human being, regardless of who they are, what they believe, what they do, whatever, they are made in the image of God. Likewise, uh, when we when we try to exclude people as though they are not quite good enough. And I, it, it happens all the time. We are, again, I think, insulting God by doing so. Um, because we're created in God's image, it also means we have a purpose. We have a purpose. Um, from the very beginning, you know, God said, and I want you to take care of this earth, okay? He says, and you will subdue it, or I think we can misunderstand what that means. In other religions, <coughs> ancient religions, they tended to think that the gods were in, in charge of, of everything that happened on the earth, that, that all of nature um, was up to the, uh, 
you know, whims of God. It's interesting that our God said, and I want you to take care of this, okay? It, it's a big responsibility to all of, of creation that God said was very good. He gave that into our hands. And I, I, I saw you had a thing up about Earth Day and, and that sort of thing. Um, and really, as, as Christians, we do need to keep in mind that God, this is his creation, as are we. And he has asked us to be uh, his representatives. Our, his representatives in the way that we treat the Earth uh, and his representatives in the way that we treat other human beings. All of that should reflect the glory, the majesty, the compassion of God. Created in God's image also means the capacity to reflect God's <coughs> attributes. You know, uh, sometimes <coughs> you might know people that are Total non-believers, totally, you know, but they're really, we're really nice people, you know. Of course, we all do. Uh, because everybody, why, why can people <clears throat> be good even if they are unbelievers? Because they're made in the image of God, like everybody else. And we reflect the attributes of God. Things that do not necessarily always come easy for us. Forgiveness, for instance. That is not a natural human tendency, right? I mean, sometimes it's just like, you know, uh, you just want to get even. Where does the capacity for forgiveness come from? It comes from a forgiving God. Our compassion, our self-sacrifice, where do those things come from? You cannot explain something like, self-sacrificial living uh, by, by evolutionary thought, for instance. It doesn't make sense in terms of <coughs> it would be, <coughs> excuse me, came out of nowhere. Um, but it makes sense if we're created in the image of God. To be gracious, to be loving, to be faithful, to be merciful and just. Those are things that we are capable of being because it is the essence of God that we carry in us. It means a lot of other things, too. One of the things that <clears throat> in traveling, in, traveling in, in Europe, and it's the same is, is true here, but oh my gosh, when you see some of the things that were created, for me, it was the statue of David. To actually see the statue of David, you cannot believe it. Huge, for one thing. And Michelangelo did that when he's 24 years old. And you think, how did that happen? You know? I mean, seriously, how does that happen? And you saw all these incredible works of art, or you saw these incredible, uh, the incredible architecture. I know that uh, all of you probably saw on TV that when Notre Dame burned, uh, and uh, perhaps it was hard to, to, to think about, well, you know, it's a building, if you've ever been in it, oh my gosh, the hundreds of years it took to build that from families who had one goal in mind, the glory of God. Uh, it is amazing what human beings can create. Why can we create those things? Because we were made in the image of God. That creativity is part of that. Now, when I say that, I also have to admit, I am perhaps one of the least creative people on the planet. I mean, uh, I wasn't given any gifts for music or for uh, art or for anything, uh, needlework, no way, okay? I can remember my, my, my husband's grandmother, this is when we were dating, she was trying to teach me one time how to tat. 
And that didn't go well. And she said, well, you know, it's kind of like teaching a hog how to jump rope. <laughs> it's not going to happen, folks. But, so I wasn't given that particular quality to create. What, what God gave me instead is the ability to appreciate. It's the ability to appreciate. I appreciate the music. I can't perform it, but it, it speaks to me. I appreciate the, the, the work that, that the incredible artistic talent that a lot of people have. And I appreciate it because people are sharing. I think about somebody like Michelangelo. God blessed him with incredible gifts, in part because <coughs> hundreds of years later, those gifts would bless people for generations to come. It is an amazing thing. We are, are, are we are created to be like God. We were created to become like Christ. That is our primary purpose. To become like Christ. It's a long journey. And it's it's not easy. It's not one we can take on our own, you know, our own strength. It is God in us. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit in us that can transform us into being more Christ-like. One of the things that I would ask for for you to do, and, and uh, I include myself in this, is to make it a deliberate that you deliberately pray every day for God to help you see others through his eyes, to react to others in the way that he would. That is the best we can do, the best we can be, the closer to Christ that we are, the closer, um, the more closely, obviously, we reflect the image of God. So, I just, I want you to think about when you run into people, particularly when you run into people that irritate you just a little bit, okay? We all have them, right? And there are times, seriously, when I have, you know, said, you know, told myself, remember, that person is created in the image of God, you know, because it's easy to forget. But when you see through God's eyes, when you look at, Others, and when you look at yourself, you will understand the value that God bestowed on every single one of us, regardless of anything else. We were made, he says, just a little lower than the angels. And we need to keep that in mind. Amen. I do want to... Uh, I forgot, when I was doing announcements, I forgot, uh, Mary Joseph, Rhonda, you forgot to announce what's going on at your church tonight. Uh, and, and it really fits in with this a lot, uh, I think. We are starting, we're going to do this for about four weeks. Uh, it is a study, actually, on human sexuality. And it really is a examination of, of what the Methodist Church has. And not everybody agrees with that decision, and we wanted to have an opportunity for people to talk about that, to talk about um, their, their frustrations they may feel, or any of that. It's it's an important it's an important thing, but as I said, it's not an issue. It's about people.